Hi, I'm Alex Paul with Open Systems Media and Embedded Computing Design, and I'm here at the Things Conference with uh, Melanie Ryback. She's with uh, Radically Open Security. And well, welcome to the show. I'm glad you have you here on stage, Melanie. Thank you so much. Now, security has become a really big issue in every space. I mean, security, personal security, device security, data security. That's a big space, a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. Where do you insert yourself into it? Uh, so mostly uh, I do, uh, well, penetration testing. So uh, basically uh, I am a, uh, I've worked in security for 15 years and I'm the CEO of a uh, group of ethical hackers. So uh, we hack companies, uh, governments, organizations, basically anyone who pays us to break their systems, software, buildings, people. <laughs> well, that's an incredibly cool job, if I may say so myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm ex-Army Electronic Warfare myself, okay. and Sneakers is one of my favorite movies. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole aspect of, of uh, well, hacking to begin with, and white hat hacking, yes. is important and oddly commendable because you're hacking for good. Yes. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. It's great to be able to play the bad guy and not get sent to jail, but still to do something useful. <laughs> Now, can you tell us about some of the more interesting application spaces that you've been involved in or organization? I mean, you don't have to give organizational names or targets, but say, ah, these are some of the threats that we have encountered. Yeah, well, I mean, we hack all kinds of different systems. I mean, everything from, uh, you know, we, we work with Google, I mean, which of course, uh, you know, we also work with banks uh, that have their own sets of threats. We also work with uh, supermarket chains, uh, you know, and, and everything from, if you walk into the typical super, supermarket, look around you, I mean, basically everything you see we've broken, so. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that's true because you have smart shelving now, you've got all of these smart systems and they're all holes into the network now. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, we live in a sea of complexity <laughs> and anytime there's a software, I mean, statistically speaking, there's 16 bugs for every 1,000 lines of code. Some of those bugs are going to be security holes and uh, those can be exploited. That's very interesting fact to point out of the, uh, the preponderance of opportunities for the bad guys so you find them so that they can patch them. Yes, exactly. So we, uh, uh, but we work with a method that's called peek over our shoulder. So we work in uh, chat rooms and we actually invite customers into our chat rooms so they can actually watch us hacking their stuff. <laughs> and that's interesting. <laughs> yes, it is. And they can overhear every single conversation our penetration testers are having uh, throughout the course of the engagement with the whole idea of really conveying the hacker mindset and really optimizing for knowledge transfer. And it works really well. Now, um, do you deal with only the software hacking side or do you also get involved with phishing or some of the human side of the security hole? Yeah, well we hack all kinds of things. I mean, we indeed do you know, software audits and the systems audits and networking, and, uh, but also embedded and hardware and crypto. And, uh, but we also do uh, phishing and social engineering. We've done lock picking, <laughs> which is also really fun. Uh, you know, uh, so we, uh, also trainings we, we do, and incident response. We do quite a few different kinds of services. So now, that's in, when you say incident response, so they've actually had a, had a penetration, they want you to what, forensic on the penetration or just repeat the penetration or? Yeah, so in the case of incident response, uh, they have actually been breached in some way, shape or form and they need, need us to help manage the incident. So in other words, you know, how can we take control of things? How can we figure out what happens, make sure that all legislation such as GDPR and data breach legislation is complied with? How can we make sure that we figure out what happened, stop it, you know, mitigate the damage, uh, be able to recover back to a normal situation again, and uh, also for, do the proper forensics and also in a legal way that if they eventually do want to do a lawsuit, also that that evidence is forensically sound. Well, and you, it's interesting you bring up the whole aspect of uh, compliance because you don't think about that, right? I've been broken into, my data's been attacked, I got to worry about the government now. Yes. Yeah, but especially since uh, GDPR, <laughs> uh, there's really a whole lot uh, that you have to, uh, to think about. And also there's uh, very strict time frames with it in uh, which you have to rea react and respond. What, can you tell, I mean, like in the case of the GDPR and a data breach, what are the general guidelines? Uh, well, I mean, 
again, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> I've also, uh, okay, I work with so you... lawyers uh, who do the ad advice for that particular thing. But uh, generally, I mean, there's you know certain deadlines with which you have to do things. I mean, certain things need to be within, uh, say, two days. Other things need to be within, you know, uh, a week. You know, I mean, it's just sort of. Uh, again, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know all the exact details Understood. of this. But uh, but we do work with lawyers that uh, help to f facilitate the process. Well, and that but that also exposes the incredible complexity of the issue that you have to deal with because yes. it's a social, a human, a technological issue. Yes. It's like wandering through a jungle, as it were. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the great thing about security. I mean, uh, almost anything you can think of, either technological or social, I mean, has, you know, ties in some way uh, to security. Now, considering security issues and security considerations, what is your position on uh, LoRaWAN's security? Is it something you find uh, easy to deal with, hard to deal with? You find that you, there's a high level of compliance in the industry? What, what's your take on LoRaWAN? Right. So, uh, I mean, first of all, LoRaWAN essentially is just small, uh, you know, sometimes power limited computers, <laughs> uh, which means that they share a lot of commonalities with other kinds of computers. I mean, they have uh, complexity in their source code. Uh, they also have uh, networking, which, uh, of course, can be uh, exploited, and operating systems, uh, which can be exploited. Uh, what does make it difficult is in situations where there are power limitations, uh, because if they're operating on a single battery, <laughs> you know, then they uh, often Oftentimes, things like really hard, you know, heavyweight crypto, the kind of industry standard crypto that we use for things like authentication and end-to-end -end encryption, it makes it a whole lot more difficult because sometimes it uses more battery than is acceptable for the requirements of the system. The other thing also is because you have distributed nodes, it also makes some other things a challenge, like uh, key management, <laughs> uh, because you know what winds up happening is you know key distribution, but also if a key is breached, you know, being able to, to, to change the keys, update the keys, revoke the keys. You know, oftentimes you have situations in which things are handled improperly, you know, hard-coded keys, things like that. And uh, this is also the kind of thing that uh, you might encounter. Very cool, Melanie. Now, um, considering that aspect, let's say I'm setting up a system. What are some of the top-level tips you can give me to help keep myself safe? Yeah, so uh, in either case, uh, if you are a consumer, uh, a lot of IoT, both LoRaWAN and otherwise, uh, the mo single most important thing to do security-wise is update your software. <laughs> so patch, 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 because, uh, you know, 90... 9% of security breaches are used with ex uh, vulnerabilities that are, are older than one year old. So... Taking advantage of doors that were broken locks, but nobody took the time to fix it. Yeah, and there were actually fixes that were put out. And But these days, I mean, if you look at uh, botnets on the internet, uh, huge numbers of botnets are created these days out of IoT devices. You know, things like uh, webcams uh, that uh, are unpatched. I mean, uh, you know, the really large uh, denial of service uh, attack um, against Brian Krebs was uh, using webcams. But, you know, even, I mean, if even things like Teslas, surprisingly enough, you know, have uh, been uh, put into botnets with Bitcoin miners, and, uh, most expensive Bitcoin miner ever. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, but basically any unpatched IoT, you know, and there's search engines in which you can find this stuff. I mean, have a look at uh, Shodan, for example, <laughs> that can find all kinds of IoT and uh, also SCADA uh, devices uh, that are just, you know, unpatched. It, it surprises people actually how much crap there is unpatched on the internet. Oh, yes and no, right? <laughs> well, they all know something is odd, but they don't know exactly where it's unsafe. Yeah. But then that's an excellent point. So software patches are almost a, a brainless, I mean, as you point out, the solution is there. To not implement that solution is, it's like not washing your hands during this flu epidemic. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, it takes uh, discipline. You know, it's the same thing as making backups for people. You know, everyone knows they should make backups, but uh, people always somehow find an excuse. It's, it's the same thing with hygiene, you know. <laughs> Very cool. So before I let you go, um, number one, where do they go to find information? What's your URL? Great. So if you want to reach out to us, uh, you can uh, look at uh, radicallyopensecurity.com. And uh, just uh, we're based in, uh, in Amsterdam, but we work uh, globally. So, yeah. Very nice, Melanie. Any last words for our audience before I uh, kick you off the stage? Well, just uh, enjoy this conference and uh, gain what you can. And thank you so much uh, for all of your time and attention. Oh, the pleasure is mine giving me the time at this very busy event. Thank you.